fun we get this show on the road here. Welcome to Key West. I'm going to be taking a left here onto Whitehead Street. A whole lot of history here on Whitehead Street. As I make my left turn, once you post a glance over here in the corner, that is the Key West Aquarium back there. That is the oldest tourist attraction here in the island. Been here since 1934. Good way to spend an afternoon. They haven't added new exhibits over there bi-weekly, a new moray eel exhibit, new shark exhibit recently. Let's continue on up Whitehead Street on the right over here. My favorite museum on the entire island, Mel Fisher's Maritime Museum. Well, Mel Fisher lived here on the island of Key West, and he was a legitimate treasure hunter. Mel Fisher searched for 15 years looking for two specific sunken Spanish treasure galleons that had gone down in a hurricane 400 years ago. The Atocha and the Santa Margarita. And after looking for 15 years, old Mel Fisher found them. He located them about 50 miles west, southwest of Key West here. And when he did, he was instantly $450 million wealthier. And according to old Mel Fisher, he only found half the treasure scheduled to be on those two galleons. The rest is still out there. On the right over here, they call these the presidential gates, only been open four times ever, and only for U.S. presidents, when you can enter on either side. Walk back about a block or so on the left-hand side, there's a museum there dedicated to former President Harry S. Truman, the Little White House Museum. Former President Harry S. Truman loved it here in Key West. He spent 176 days of his presidency right here in Key West doing exactly what we do today. He was known to walk around wearing very bad Hawaiian shirts. He had all the bars on Duval Street. Look on the left here is my favorite tree, the banyan tree. If you're not familiar with the banyan, the limbs grow out. They drop these aerial roots. When those roots hit the ground, they start another trunk and just continue the process. Largest banyan tree in the world picks up five full acres located in India. Again, we're on Whitehead Street. A whole lot of history here. One block over the infamous Duval Street. Most of the notorious debauchery film stories you've ever heard about Key West. And they're all true, by the way. have taken place on Duval Street. Over here on Whitehead History. And these two streets run parallel for the entire 14 blocks. All the way down to the southernmost point. A little bit of history over here in this building. This is our post office here on Whitehead Street. The architect that designed that building designed it to look like the Civil War forts here on the island, which are three. We'll go by one of them here shortly. The architect that designed it, his name was Sonny McCoy, who at the time was also our mayor, serving his fourth term as mayor. Sonny McCoy knew elections were coming up. He wanted to be reelected to his fifth term. So he decided he had to draw a little bit of attention to himself, and he did. came up with the bubbles of these stuff. Sonny McCoy announced he was going to slalom ski. That's one single ski all the way from Key West to Havana, Cuba. That's 125 miles. He was not a young man, by the way, but guess what? He pulled it off. Covered 125 miles in six hours nonstop. He arrived in Havana, Cuba. The Cubans had no idea he was even coming. They promptly arrested him. They put him on an airplane. They sent him back to Key West as fast as possible. They wanted nothing to do with Sonny McCoy, who did get reelected to his fifth term and did make the Guinnesses World Book of Records. On the left over here is the oldest bar on the island. It's called the Green Parrot. Very popular with locals and visitors alike. When you go by there, you can see all that fancy metal work on the windows. That metal work is on there not to keep you from getting in, but to keep those drunk hippies from falling out while they're At the Green Parrot also, across the street over here, these are called the timeout benches. If you get a little too inebriated, you drink a little too much, they'll walk you over, set you on those benches over there. Once your head clears up, they'll tell you, hey, you, over there with the hat, come on back, all's forgiven. If you get really bored at home, you can go to Facebook, the timeout bench in Key West, whoa, has its own Facebook page. Again, here on the left, the green parrot. Good live music all day and all night right there. Now, we're rolling right into one of the villages within the village of the U.S. This is called the Hummel Village. We have a long
long history of the Bohemian people. They've been coming here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Originally to uh, take advantage of the work we've offered over time, things like shipwrecking, sponging, fishing, shrimping, they've all been big industries here. A lot of the folks that live over this part of town are direct descendants of those original Bohemians from hundreds of years ago. They're still here. Cross Street up in front of me here is Petronia Street. If you take a right on Petronia, go down one block on the right on the corner of Petronia and Thomas, one of my favorite restaurants, called Blue Heaven. It's very key west. You can sit inside with the air conditioner. You can sit outside with the roosters. Your choice. It's good food. Best key lime pie on the island. And it's formal like it was a brothel. One block down on the right. Blue Heaven. Now coming up here on the left behind this very curvy, poorly built, looking like it couldn't fall down. A red brick wall over here is the Ernest Hemingway House. Ernest lived in this house from 1931 to 39, eight years. Wrote five of his most famous novels while he was living here. You can do your own self-guided tours through here. The grounds are equally interesting like the house itself. The house was actually a wedding gift to Ernest and his wife from his wife's uncle. First swimming pool on the island ever. Right on the other side of this wall here, dig down in the coral rock to install it. The house is currently occupied by 60 six-toed polydectyl cats. And they are the descendants of the original pair of six-toed cats that Ernest received as a gift back in the 1930s. They're still here. They're laying around in there any way they like to lay. Over here on the right, behind that beautiful banyan tree is our lighthouse. Not the original lighthouse. The original one blew down in the hurricane 150 years ago, down by the southernmost point, directly where we're headed here. So when they built our next lighthouse, that one right there, they moved a little further inland. Matter of fact, it's so far inland, it's within the city limits. Currently today, it's inoperable currently, but it's open to the public. You can walk right up there, there's a spiral staircase up in the middle. Take it all the way to the top. Look out over the coral reef or back over the island here. Now we are rapidly approaching the southernmost point. I can see it from here. We're about three blocks away. A little bump right here. I hit every, every day. Hold on a little bit. Here we go. All right, we made it through again. Coming up on the right over here is one of our naval bases right over here. It's called the Truman Annex. We currently have six Navy bases here on the island and a long history with the Navy. The Navy's been coming here for over 200 years originally to fight pirates. Back in the day, old Blackbeard himself used to frequent the Florida Keys there. We also have something very similar to a Top Gun program here. We train Navy pilots how to fly F-18s. You can hear and see them flying around the island all day, every day. And while those pilots are here training, this is where they stay at the uh, Truman Annex. One of the best locations on the island. Well, again, we're rapidly approaching the southernmost point. A uh, gentleman's indicating I should stop, so I'm going to do that. See what's going on here. Oh, uh, trolley. Ah, uh, those trolleys. Southernmost 
What kind of puts it in context for me where we're located right now, see how this works for you, is where we are sitting right this very moment. We are closer to Havana, Cuba than we are the closest Walmart. Think about that for a minute. We're pretty far south. They want to take their picture next to the buoy there. They'll stand in line for hours. Everything down here is southernmost, by the way, folks. Over here on the right, we have what was called the southernmost house. Now it's the southernmost inn. Fancy inn you can stay at. On the left, the southernmost food truck at the stop sign to the right, southernmost beach down further on the right, southernmost hotel, and across the street, the southernmost resort. You get the idea? A lot of history over here at the southernmost end. Thomas Edison designed and installed the original electrical wiring in that house there. If you look at the second window, when the light hits it right, there's a bullet hole in that window. That's where somebody took a shot at old Al Capone when he was standing there back in his bootlegging days. Unfortunately, they were a poor shot and they missed. A little bit of a story attached to this house right over here, Eduardo Gatto. He was a very wealthy cigar maker here on the island. He had a son, Eduardo Gatto Jr. Senior built Jr., that house right there. But when he built it originally, it was on this lock over here on my right. Junior would sit out on the front porch every morning and smoke a big old Cuban cigar and did not like the way the sun hit him in the eyes in the morning. So Junior asked Senior to move the house. Senior picked it up from here, moved it over here, turned around, set it down. You can see the address over the front door, 1327. Well, that was the original address when the house sat over here on the right. Making that house, the only odd number house on an even number side of the street, on Duval Street. We're on Duval Street, the famous Duval Street, the infamous Duval Street, the notorious Duval Street. Right, the snooty end the Duval Street. On the left over here is the Butterfly Conservatory. That is the most popular tourist attraction on the island here. If you look on the back of the building there, you can see there's a big old atrium back there. You can do your own self-guided tours through there. Inside that atrium, there's over a thousand butterflies flying around. Over 60 different species. Also a bunch of tropical birds flying around. Paraflamingos are one of the nicest collections of tropical plants on the entire island at the Butterfly Conservatory. Check it out while you're here, it's fun. Again, we're on Duval Street. Duval Street runs 14 blocks, about one mile. Runs from south to west. Again, most of those notorious debauchery-filled stories you've ever heard about Key West, and they're all true, generally take place down at the other end of Duval. But between you and me, there's a whole lot of debauchery takes place in this third house on the right, where it says VIP. The girls sit out here all day and all night, and they are very, very, very friendly. They even have a shuttle parked out front, they'll come pick you up. I never look over there, brings back bad memories, I'm focused straight ahead, obviously they're busy though, nobody's sitting out there. So we're going to continue on. Coming up on the left over here was a uh, Cuban part of town 150 years ago. 150 years ago, the Cuban Revolution was going on, a lot of those flight folks fled here to a Key West so they could live a little bit longer. Stayed in this part of town right over here. They were fighting against the Spanish rule there, even the leader of the revolution, Jose Martí, fled here to Key West. While he was here, he stayed over here in Gato Village, got up on the balcony here, what is today la di da fiery speeches to the Cubans gathered below to listen to him. He was a really good recruiter, trying to recruit folks, take them back to Cuba with him and fight the good fight against the Spanish rule. On his last visit here, he collected 40 souls to take back with him. Unfortunately, Jose Marti and the entire 40 souls he took back with him all died on the battlefield in Havana, Cuba. Never to return to Key West. Jose Marti. On the left here, this was the Cuban Social Club 150 years ago. You could walk in there 150 years ago, learn to trade, learn to speak English, get a meal. But they're remembered for one thing and one thing only. The dances they had there on Saturday night. The best dances, the best Cuban bands on the island at the Cuban Social Club. We're on Duval Street. We're coming up to our first stop here. This is known as Stop Me Like Boy. Also known as Truval at the intersection of Truman and Duval. In a moment, I'm going to pull up to this little stop. I'm going to come to a complete stop right there. When I do, if you want to exit or change seats, that'll be your opportunity. But wait till I get up in there. I'll come to a safe and complete stop and let you know. 
We've got a new coffee company here in town, Black Rifle Coffee Company. I've seen them on TV and online. They're veteran owned. I wish them the best, but they got a tall order in front of them. We have a local coffee company here called the Cuban Coffee Queen. Very strong, flavorful Cuban coffee. I highly recommend it. Her motto is drink our coffee, do stupid things faster. We already put the Starbucks out of business. Unfortunately, they might be next. Here we go. Occasionally we got folks looking to join us here. I don't see anybody yet. It's a little early for Key West. Things tend to open up here at about 11 o'clock, only 30 minutes from now. Alright, I call that a safe and complete stop. Anybody would like to exit and change seats? Now's your opportunity. How you doing, brother? Everything good? Alright, jumping on Truman Avenue here, named after former President Harry S. Truman. Yes, sir. years ago. 
They've all evolved quite uniquely. Something's cooking around here. <laughs> some of them have sheds or garages now. Some have second stories. Some have additions. There's one down here looks like it was widened. There's one down here that's got a stone exterior. They're all quite unique looking now. But they all started out with little shoebox size houses, 700 square feet, built by Eduardo Gatto, the cigar maker, for his employees to live in. And the reason there's so many of them here, because there's a building in the next block on the right-hand side that was one of his cigar factories. So he built these little houses all around the cigar factories for his employees to live in. He actually built 500 of them here on the island. Now in this neighborhood, excuse me, the neighbors have requested that the narrators on the train uh, go quiet when we cut through here, this next two blocks. So I'm going to go silent. I'll catch you at the end of these two blocks. On both sides of the house, everything started out a shotgun house. A couple of original looking ones on the left midway. And then the actual cigar factory on the right up here. I'll see you in about two blocks. I'm out of my quiet zone, back into the danger zone. I want to talk for a minute about something known as the Overseas Railroad. That was an extension of the railroad from Miami all the way down to Key West. It was built 120 years ago with the brainchild of Mr. Henry Flagler, who 120 years ago owned most of the railroads on the eastern half of the United States. Mr. Flagler was a very wealthy man. He was also partners with a gentleman named John D. Rockefeller. Together, they owned a little company known as Standard Oil. Little bump right here, folks. Standard Oil became Esso, became Exxon, still in business today. 120 years ago, Mr. Uh, Rockefeller and Mr. Flagler were the wealthiest men in the country, quite possibly the world. Mr. Flagler was wealthy enough to indulge in his three favorite things in life, which were railroads, five-star hotels, and the state of Florida. And he extended his railroad down into Florida, all the way down to St. Augustine. When he arrived there, he discovered there was no five-star hotel for himself and his entourage to stay in, so he built one. It was called the Ponce de Leon, still there today. Mr. Flagler seemed kind of content there for a minute or two, and he decided to go further south, and he did extend his railroad all the way down to Palm Beach. When he arrived, no five-star hotel, he built the Breakers. Still there today, right on the ocean, Palm Beach. And again, he was content for a minute, but then again, he got that itch to go further south, and he did, all the way down to Miami. When he arrived, no five-star hotel, he built the Royal Palm. Well, then he decided to come all the way down here to Key West. It took him eight years to build that last section from Miami here to Key West. It cost him $50 million. That was a whole lot of money, 120 years ago. But he got here. When he got here, surprise, surprise, no five-star hotel. He built the Casa Marina. Here it is. Runs a city block in both directions here. We're actually looking at the back of the Casa Marina. It's still facing the ocean here. I've been to parties over here. When you're at the parties out on the beach, you look back at the Casa Marina. It looks like a palace. It's quite beautiful, quite, quite nice. Originally, when they opened up over here 120 years ago, rooms were $8 a night. And that included all three meals. The Casa Marina actually translates to House by the Sea. Now we're down here at one of our public beaches. This is known as Higgs Beach. When the weather's good, there's a lot of people out here. The water's very shallow. Depending on the tides, it could be three, four feet, maybe five feet. You see a bunch of sand here that 
have washed up with a lot of seaweed here. They kind of collect it here and then they distribute it and get it out of here. This body of water out here is known as the Florida Straits and the Straits of Florida. This is where the Gulf of Mexico meets the Atlantic Ocean right here. About five or six miles out is the coral reef that is the only living coral reef in the United States. That coral reef runs for 220 miles. All the way from Miami to the Dry Port Tugas, which are 70 miles southwest of this area. You see some big boats sitting out there offshore. Those are shrimpy boats. We do our shrimping here for our pink shrimp we have here at night. During the day, the pink shrimp burrow down on the sea floor, only come out at night to feed. So right now, those boats are sitting there. And they are processing what they caught last night and preparing to go back out the night when it gets dark. When it gets dark, they'll shine lights in the water, drop those nets, drag them through the water, pull them up full of pink shrimp. In front of me here, there's a red light building on the right-hand side coming up here. This was the Silver War Fort, known as West Martello Silver War Fort. Today it's the Key West Garden Club. It's free. You can walk right in here. In the back and on the other side, they have an acre or two of beautiful tropical plants. Got a tour through there. There's one of those shrimping boats out there. They've been lining up. There's another one over here. And we got about, about a dozen up out here recently. I see yeah, another two or three down here further. On the right over here, this is the White Street Fishing Pier. That is the only fishing pier here in Key West. Also known as the Unfinished Bridge to Cuba. They never will finish it. The water's very shallow. I can almost see the sandbars over here. A little bit higher tide right now, so it might be five feet, four feet deep there. A lot of times it's two feet deep there. We go to a beach down a little further here. Sometimes we take our lounge chairs out down the sandbars and learn how to cocktail. It's so shallow. On the right over here is the Key West Wildlife and Indigenous Park. The indigenous animals like sea turtles and pelicans, if they're ever injured or ill, Folks over here will scoop them up, take them over here, nurse them back to health, and then release them right where they found them. They're also open to the public every day. It's free to walk right in and see the animals. They have one hand there. Get down here by the ocean it reminds me it's time to talk about what was the most profitable industry to ever hit this island. And it peaked about 200 years ago called shipwrecking or wrecking. Over time, we've had thousands and thousands of boats and ships rank into our coral reef offshore five or six miles, and we turned it into a big industry. We actually built something called Wreckers Towers. They were wooden platforms, four or five stories tall. They were built all along the ocean here. They were manned 24 hours a day to watch out over that coral reef for ships to wreck into that coral reef, and if they spotted one, they would scurry down off of that platform as fast as possible, get to their boat or their ship, and make their way out to the shipwreck as fast as possible. Because the first captain to arrive there was known as the wrecking master. He was immediately entitled to 50% of the cargo on that wreck ship. 25% went back to the original owner, and 25% was auctioned off. And the funds were distributed evenly to the citizens of the West making the citizens of Key West per capita the wealthiest in the country, quite possibly the world back then. Very profitable industry. The first billionaire in the state of Florida, William Curry, made his money in shipwrecking right here in Key West. His descendants still live here today. We'll go by his big, beautiful Victorian house here shortly. Two hundred years ago, we had a ship full of pianos wreck out on the coral reef. Every family on the island received a piano as a gift. The only problem was there were no piano teachers anywhere on the island. He was. Hopefully they enjoyed them nonetheless. Most people recognize this. This is known as a coke shell. A coke is nothing more than a big old snail. We got introduced to the conch as a food source hundreds of years ago by the Bahamian people. There's a lot of conchs living in the Atlantic Ocean between the Bahamas and the Florida Keys, so we eat them every day down here. If you never tried conch, you may want to try some conch fritters while you're here. They're quite tasty. But we also eat conch strips, conch steaks, conch chowder, conch salad. We've totally embraced the conch here. Our high school football team is known as the Fighting Conchs. Go conch. Our cheerleader.
Passengers of the Coquettes. Our sidewalks are made out of concrete. Yes, it's true. Once this light changes, we're going to cross over here. We're going to go from Old Town into even older town. First five or six houses on the left over here are called shotgun houses. Talked about them earlier. The reason they're here, and there's more of them over here that have changed quite a bit, they've evolved, is because this used to be a cigar factory here. One of them would have got those cigar factories. So again, he built those shotgun houses for his employees to live in. Again, most of the houses in this neighborhood across the street were built 100, 150, even 200 years ago. Here we go. Another architectural feature I want to point out to you is I look around every house on the island has a metal roof. Every single one that's mandated, you must have a metal roof. And there's two good reasons why. The first reason is the Great Fire of 1886. It swept across this island and burnt down 80% of the homes on the island. Entire neighborhoods were burnt to the ground. The reason so many homes and uh, buildings burnt down is previous to the metal roofs, everything had a wooden roof. And the houses are very, very close together. So the flames and sparks from one wooden roof jump to the next, burnt down entire neighborhoods. Again, 80% of the homes and the buildings on the island. Excuse me while I look around this corner before I commit to this street. Oh, good example. Can't get through. Got to keep going. I have no reverse. So if I commit to a street like that and can't get through, we're all going to have a bad day. I got a call for help. They'll come disassemble the train. Tow us out of there, but we're good to go. We'll go around a little bit here and cut through this neighborhood. Sometimes he didn't. Hence the other name of Widow's Walk, or Captain's Walk and the Widow's Walk. 
Here's another fine example of a captain's walk and a widow's walk at the Captain John Low House. Built 200 years ago for another shipwrecker, Captain John Low. We're going to be turning here onto Simonton Street, named after John Simonton. He was a wealthy man here on the island, self-made wealthy man. His business was importing tobacco from Cuba, the finest tobacco in the world. He would travel to Cuba, bring back that tobacco to sell to cigar makers like Mr. Eduardo Gatto. It did quite well for himself. On one of his visits to Cuba, he ran across a Cuban military officer, an admiral, who offered to sell him the entire island of Key West for the sum of $2,000. And this was all going on about 200 years ago. Mr. Simonton thought about it for a minute and accepted the offer. Purchased the deeds and the documents showing the ownership. Rushed back to Key West as fast as possible, went down to the courthouse, presented those documents. The clerk there, the clerk looked at the documents, unfortunately laughed. Told him he was the third person this week to come in with those very same documents. He'd been tricked and hoodwinked, but they were fraudulent. But Mr. Simonton was not dismayed. He had friends in powerful places in the federal government, the U.S. Navy. And he approached him and said, look, help me become the legal owner of the entire island of Key West. I'll give you 25% of the island to build your Navy bases. Well, the federal government and the Navy thought about it for a moment and said, okay, we accept your offer. Since then, we've had a lot of Navy personnel here, a lot of Navy bases. Mr. Simonton did become the legal owner of the entire island of Key West. He lived here for eight additional years, then legally sold the island to four other wealthy gentlemen and returned to the Bahamas where he was from, John Simonton. Now we're coming up to our next stop here. Now about four blocks. Our next stop, we're going to stop for ten full minutes. I'm going to pull up next to a building. Inside that building, there are clean restrooms. There are cold drinks, snacks, souvenirs. We're going to sit there. We're going to be there for uh, ten minutes. After about eight minutes, I'm going to hit my whistle, kind of like this. That's an indicator time to come on back. We have more to see, more to do. This will not be the end of our tour. More to see, more to do. Once we're aboard, we got another 20 minutes. We'll go down the notorious end of the Wall Street, cut through an old neighborhood, head down towards our historic seaport, back to another old neighborhood, and end up back in Mallory Square, where most of us started. So we'll be at this next stop in about three blocks. On the corner on the right down here, this old red brick warehouse building. This is currently today the Ernest Hemingway Rum Distillery. They manufacture and bottle their own rum right in there. It's open to the public every day. You can walk in, do a self-guided tour, get some free samples. Snacks, souvenirs, 
I'll be sitting right here. I'll hit my horn in about eight minutes, and we'll continue on. I call that a safe and complete stop, folks. Enjoy. Okay, we're pulling out onto Duval Street here, the infamous Duval Street. Duval Street runs 14 blocks, approximately one mile, ends right here to the right. This is the westerly most end versus the southerly at the other end. As I pull out here, there's a red and yellow brick building over here in the corner of my left right now. I'll be on my right when I get around. That's known as the Cuban Bank, founded in 1891. We've had Cuban immigration here for hundreds and hundreds of years, and some of those folks became very wealthy. When they did, the uh, Cubans decided they did not trust the American banks. So the Cubans got them together and built their own bank. This building right here. I'm sure if the original owners and builders of this building knew it was a t-shirt store today, they would certainly roll over in their grave. On the left over here, one of my uh, favorite restaurants on the island, Bagatelles. It's like a white tablecloth restaurant, nice place you sit upstairs here. You can uh, enjoy the food, hear all the music over here at Hogs Breath, and watch all the nonsense here on Duval Street. Best conch critters on the island, right there at the conch shack, dry them while you're here. Coming up on the right over here is the world's smallest bar. Six good friends can fit in there at any given moment. And coming up on the left down here, right across the street, is the infamous Sloppy Joe's. Made famous by Ernest Hemingway and his buddy Sloppy Joe Russell. Live music there all day, every day. This is definitely the most popular spot to uh, stop when you're here in Key West, Sloppy Joe's. But right over here is the original Sloppy Joe's today. It's called Captain Tony's. That was Sloppy Joe's from 1933 to 37. Then they moved down to here to what was an empty warehouse. Been here ever since. Sloppy Joe's on the right over here. Reckless Rick's noisy place. Next to it, Dirty Harry's, another noisy place. And over here, the noisiest of them all, Irish Nevins. Ladies, over here on the right is the Husband Daycare Center. You can drop your husbands off there for a while. They'll watch them. Go out to a little shopping. You always hear yourself, and they're always glad to see you arrive at the Hudson Daycare Center. On the right over here, the bar, a three-story bar here on the island. Notorious place. You can sit here in the door and get you drunk on if you want. You don't serve food or anything. You sit there long enough to get bored, you want a little uh, adventure. I think there's stairs up to the next level. Looks like it should be a Bourbon Street in New Orleans, but really it gets adventures up when you take those stairs all the way up to the rooftop up there. There's a notorious bar up there called the Garden of Eden. That is our clothing optional bar here on the island. 365 days a year clothing optional. I encourage you to take a look around, but I'm warning you now, you could see things up there that you can never, ever, ever unsee. I have tried. On the left over here, the Hard Rock Cafe today, but 200 years ago, William Curry built that house for his son and the one next to it for his daughter. That was the first brick house on the island right there. It's the Women's Club. Women's Club. Hi there, Women's Club. They always complain I don't mention them, so I ought to do it every now and then. On the right over here, this was the old schoolhouse. You can see the bell up there on the second story. They used to ring time to go to school. On the left over here is St. Paul's Episcopal Church. That's the oldest church here on the island. And the fourth church is set on that corner lot there. Actually, it's not the oldest. I could stand corrected on that. But it is the fourth church there. The first one was blown down in a hurricane. The second one burnt up in the Great Fire of 1886. The third one, another hurricane. Well, that church has been there over 100 years now. We believe it's here to stay. Time will tell. They leave their doors open all day, every day. You can walk right in and take a look at their stained glass windows there. And they're valued at over $1 million. Right to Wall Street, coming up on the right, is the La Concha Hotel. Thomas building in Old Town is seven stories tall. You can to see Williams the Twilight. This is where he was staying back in the day. When you're under, you're taking the place. On a high-tech group, that's street car named Desire. Williams House will be building our Key West. Always will be the tallest building on the island, by the way. The locals were so upset when they built this building. It's so big and so tall, we hate it. But they changed the laws. You can never get built out of a seven-story building here in Old Town Key West. The La Concha will always be the tallest. On the
on the right here, right in front of this truck on the right, is the original Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, right here, Margaritaville. Been non-stop busy for three months or so. Coincidentally, it's about when Jimmy passed on. On the left over here, Willie T's, another local favorite bar. Live music all day, every day over here. At Willie T's. Right next to it, Walgreens, our drugstore that was formerly the Strand Theater. That building is built in what they call the Rococo style of architecture, which is very popular in Miami and Cuba, not as much here. That's the only example of Rococo style architecture here in the U.S. Yeah, we're jumping off, come jump back on Whitehead Street. We're on it earlier. It's like back and forth of all Whitehead and all Whitehead. We got a lot of history over here, a lot of debauchery on Duval. I like this uh, windows here in this bar here called the Bearded Lady. The first window says good beer, decent wine, questionable staff. The next one says sorry, we're open. Now we're going to swing around, we're going to cut through an old neighborhood, head down to this historic seaport area here. This block I'm pulling onto here on Whitehead Street is a very important block. Why do you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you, because this block is either the first block or the last block of Route 1, depending which way you're headed. If you were to turn around and go the opposite way that I'm heading right now, you can stay on this road right here, Route 1, for 2,200 miles. It'll take you all the way to Fort Kent, Maine. Route 1 begins and ends right here in Key West. And right the most photographed sign on the island. The end of Route 1 with the zero mile marker right here. Across the street facing the opposite direction, the beginning of Route 1 with the zero mile marker. Begins and ends right here in Key West, right there. I don't think they're going to be able to pull this off. Let's see. Maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe not. By now, I've got a bunch of you have said, uh, look at all those roosters. Wonder why those roosters and ants are running around the streets here. Well, I'm going to tell you why they're here and how they got here. And we've had Cuban immigration here on the island for hundreds and hundreds of years. When the Cubans immigrated here over time, they brought all their traditions with them, just like we would if roles were reversed. One of the traditions that the Cubans brought with them that they held very dear to their heart was cockfighting. So the Cubans that immigrated here were able to legally cockfight for hundreds and hundreds of years. But finally, about 40 years ago, the state of Florida made cockfighting illegal. To protest that ruling, the Cuban cockfighters released all their roosters, all their chickens, all their hens into the streets, and they've been here ever since. Who would park a golf cart right in the middle of the street like that, huh? mention unbelievable. How you doing? Everything good, man? Yeah, good to see you. I don't know either. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's see if we can start her up here. Uh, Good, good, uh, yeah. Good, yeah. Thank you very much, you guys. 
No, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Alright! Oh, hey. Different texture, and they have a little crab or lobster flavor to them here. I don't know quite what 